Hello, my name is Anand Bean and welcome to uh, Life Hacking as Wished. So I was um, invited by Sue Java and uh, this is a Brazilian Java user group to uh, show some lightweightness <laughs> in 2019. And yeah, I had already contact with uh, the Java man and recorded an episode of a podcast. So if you're interested, it's called the Java man. And this is, of course, Bruno Souza, um, also one of the, uh, I would say, somehow known person of Sujava. Um, uh, Bruno looks like a little bit like a Superman because he's always, uh, it, it, how to call it, he has like a, it looks like, uh, how, to, how to tell it, so you will, you, <laughs> you will recognize him. And this is the podcast called um, Airhex FM. So if you're interested, the episode 20 is uh, with Bruno. So what, what I will use um, in my, uh, in the session, I wanted to say in my project is, a tool I've wrote is Watch and Deploy, and I actually used that uh, yesterday on two Java conferences in Germany, and people ask me, you know, what is it and uh, what it does? And this is, I would say, the most primitive deployment tool you can build. And uh, to start with some code, um, this is actually the code from, from, from what? You can find it on, on my GitHub. And it comprises basically two parts. Uh, this is a folder watch service. It pulls uh, the whole folder in uh, 500 milliseconds. If it finds changes, it invokes Maven with Builder, and you see what happens behind the scenes is Maven clean package. So this is all uh, all it does, and I will use it in a second so you can check out the code and uh, or uh, just download the jar, it's ex executable jar. So um, there's actually nothing to configure except you have to point to a deployment director directory of a server. So this was what, this is watch and deploy, and there's of course a GitHub project with that. So, um, okay, so we have that. Now, uh, why what uh, works so well? So I promised you not to use any slides. And um, so I won't use slides. What I would like to do is, um, where's my desktop? I would like to show you uh, now, just, I need another screen, um, a markdown file, which is the only slide um, um, I have today and uh, convention of a configuration this is for instance why what can work so what it means is if I would start a project right now and let's call it uh, I actually forgot to think uh, but I think uh, let's say coffee could work so um, then I would set up um, Jakarta EE project. So I was uh, actually busy and created an archetype for Jakarta EE and uh, call it coffee. So it happened yesterday in a train. Um, and uh, what happens now, it creates a uh, coffee project. And if we will switch to the IDE and just load the project, reload the um, project, it just tries to find you know all projects in the folder and then you will see this so what happens now um, there are uh, two dependencies one is Jakarta 8 API and the other one is microprofile 3 so now uh, what you see here as well is the project name is a uh, coffee the uh, final name is coffee no versions there's no uh, no inheritance and what I know right now already is that the output is going to be a war Oh, sorry, coffee.war. So I can rely on it. So, and this is how what operates. It just, it knows that it will build a project. It will find a war with the name of the folder. So don't make me think, right? And uh, copy this to a given server. So um, therefore there is zero configuration, which is really convenient. So um, this means if I will fire up now, wait a second, for instance, Payara. And by the way, if your Payara doesn't start, uh, which happens to me at yesterday's conference, uh, it, it might be the case that it collides with a screen sharing port, which in my case was activated by Skype um, because I had a session with my clients and it conflicts with uh, internal, um, um, how it's called, Hazelcast port. So now uh, it worked. And um, what I would like to do is to run what? And uh, what what does is at, um, it was started in the project, so it finds the POM, it scans for changes, performs the initial build, and copies the WAR file to uh, four servers on my machine. Uh, what what are these servers? Is Whitefly, Open Liberty, um, uh, the uh, Apache Tommy, and Payara. So, 
I get the questions on now, uh, what is the best one? It's hard to tell. They are all great. So really, it's not like, you know, um, I think there are no, no more bad servers anymore. They are refined for years. So uh, it's not like, you know, 20 years ago, it would be a different story, but now all servers are small, fast, and major. Okay, nice. Uh, so what it already means is, let's try that. Without even thinking, conventional configuration, I can say, um, uh, give me please HTTP localhost. And, uh, okay, 8080 is the, almost a convention. Most of the servers, but not Open Liberty, are doing this. Localhost uh, 8080, then coffee and resources, and I think pink because uh, my resource is always pink, and it worked. So what it means is, um, if you have conventions, you can save a lot of time. This is even less ceremony involved because I uh, you know. Think about that. If I would have you know to configure our properties and dependencies just to see something on screen, um, it would be a terrible experience. In Java E or a microprocessor, would never take off. Okay, now, um, having said that, I forgot an uh, important point is time to hello world, or sometimes I call it time to first commit. So, and this is why I created the archetype, because without the archetype, I will have, you know, exactly remember all the uh, dependencies here, so there are just two, but it started with one, so I started an archetype with uh, Java 8, now I have uh, two dependencies. And, uh, but this is faster right now. So um, even if I have spare time, you know, I'm uh, in the airport or somewhere, uh, or um, is a boring time somewhere, and I have ten, 10 minutes of spare time, I can fire up the archetype and create a proof of concept and, and, and see whether something works. So this is uh, what happens a lot. And without the archetype and uh, without the automation or preparation, or if this would be, um, this were more complicated, there would be no way for me to do something sens sensible. So I would say, um, if you evaluate that technology, time to first commit is uh, is very important. So the lower the time to first uh, to, uh, to time to first commit, the uh, higher the acceptance in team, company, or whatever. And this is actually maybe one of the reasons why um, right now I'm, I'm working with lots of startups with this technology, Jakarta and Microprof, and they really like it. And the reason is because it's simple, so they can immediately start. So not like they have to configure you know, all the world or pull, you know, 35,000 NPM dependencies just to see Hello World on screen. So um, this is what, um, what 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 happens. And by the way, um, what I usually do, I install Payara uh, before or the servers with a simple script, which actually comprises unzip, so which is really convenient. Um, if you like, ask me questions, you can use my Twitter account. Um, and there's already, yeah, this uh, already the first mentioning from, with, from Elder Mor uh, Moraes. Or use the built-in chat if you like. Um, so ask whatever you like, and hopefully the questions will appear here. Okay. So now, uh, convention of a configuration, hello world, and automation. What I would like, what I usually do, I I, I write the small scripts. Um, they are just trivial. For instance, uh, what I did set up Jakarta E project, and if you take a look on that, um, if we just um, see what it actually is, then, wait a second. So, now, um, it is just invokes the Maven archetype, which is the, um, uh, um, stated on the, uh, from on GitHub, it's exactly the same. What I did, I just, you know, prepared a, a parameter and um, yeah, saves me each time, I would say 10 seconds. Except if I start explaining what happens behind the scenes, it uh, it's um, it costs me half a minute. So, um, yeah. But this is what happened behind the scenes. So now we have the server, and now the question to know what to choose. So we have Jakarta E8 and Microprofit. So the truth is, all servers support both. So um, this is my default. So um, I I think in the recent two years I always use both together. For me, it does make a lot of sense just to use. Uh, MicroProfile or Jakarta E if the runtime support both, and um, but um, from the uh, from the how to call it from the architectural perspective, it um, it, it works like this that um, some APIs from Jakarta E are the you know base APIs like CDI, JaxRS, so the RESTful services, JSONP on JSONB, and the um, others uh, um, the other specifications come from MicroProfile, 
and we will get probably you know one release a year i think from jakarta -E. and uh we have already four releases a year in micro profile so but what we can do so we have the pink uh but we actually need coffees so what i would like to do is to create a coffee and this is uh com air uh let's say oh um Stardux, Stardux, no, uh, Stardux is a good name. And now, um, let's say, Coffee Boundary and um, Coffee Resource. I actually forgot to prepare. I have no idea what the typical Brazilian coffee brands are, but I think, uh, unfortunately, I don't think Java is a uh, <laughs> Brazilian uh, brand, but... Um, coffees so let's do this and um, just might make it already a little bit more complicated to save time so I would say uh, I think it's called or roaster roaster is good and what I would like also have is a coffee a coffee and this is going to be the entity and uh, the coffee has a name and I think public is um, string um, or string boolean whether it's just Arabica or a mix between Arabica and something else Robusta I think so we have now oh um, two properties so it looks good and we have the uh, roaster and the roast uh, returns uh, at least a coffee. So, a coffee, roast, coffee. Return new, new coffee. And the name is, I also forgot from Bruno the, um, the mascot. I uh, had to look, let's see. So, Java mascot. And this is, oh, Eclipse Node.js, uh, Jagi, of course. So uh, we have Jagi brand, and uh, Jagi is, of course, 100% Arabica coffee. So we have that, and I would like to, to use that. So what I can do, so I would say this is the coffee, and um, the coffee, coffee, I get one coffee. Which is actually wrong because I would uh, like to get a, or if I say coffees get, I would expect a collection or list of coffees. But this is uh, easier to implement or um, for a session. So what I would like to do is to inject the uh, roaster, roaster, and the roaster should return ready to use coffee. return so we have the uh, roaster roast looks good the roaster roast coffee and what we could do right away right now is stateless and what stateless does it becomes an EJB or um, it stands for enterprise uh, Jakarta bean of course and uh, it is a more lightweight and uh, a way better more scalable and easier to use than the old enterprise Java beans so um, by the way, for us, um, this is exactly the same, but the name is different, so we can just rebrand it. So, But um, what happens behind the scenes is um, transaction is going to be started and uh, the, uh, the inst instances are going to be reused, which is good, but if EJBs uh, will uh, die, it will be very easy to port to CDI with, for instance, transactional request scope. I would expect to introduce a uh, stereotype with name not stateless rather than how we could call it pooled, for instance, or uh, a boundary would be nice, you know, but this is, yeah, boundary would be actually really nice. So, but um, yeah, um, let's save it. So, um, so those was the first component. And uh, if with a little bit of luck, we could actually t see whether it works and it works. So we got Arabica, true name and Jaggi. So, um, or Jugi or Jaggi is the question, how to pronounce the mascot. But as you can see, another convention of a configuration without even thinking, 
uh, I um, I can find you know uh, I can just point to my to my microservice. On that note, what I would like to do is to, um, just to see whether it actually works. I get Swagger and Open API for free. So um, as you can see, I get schemas and the coffee is an object and has two properties, string and boolean, and there is actually uh, nothing to set up. So it it works um, out of the box now. Um, at this point, I would just hack uh, with MicroProfile, but what I'm actually doing in projects is I introduce, let's say, set up Java project. So do I have it as well? Exactly. And the name is, is a wrong directory. So again, set up Java project, Java project. And the name is coffee st. And ST stands for system test. The question is why I choose strange name system tests. And the answer is because I'm involved in project with other consultants, large companies, and they always challenge me with names. So uh, if you search for system tests and Wikipedia, um, system testing, you will find a definition. And this definition fits pretty well with, with uh, this definition of my system test. So if someone, please don't rewrite Wikipedia because then I will have, you know, to change all the names, but uh, they are based on Wikipedia. Why I'm doing that? Because of Parkinson law of triviality, and the Parkinson law of triviality. This uh, law says uh, there. Uh, but let's go with the Wikipedia definition. It says that uh, the more trivial something is, the more discussion it generates. So, um, for that purpose, I use SD for system tests. And uh, the reason is because it's defined in Wikipedia and it's easy to access and um, quasi-standard. Now, so my project was created and um, I could, of course, create it in NetBeans as well. But uh, in some project there is um, no NetBeans, so I will have to also do something. And this is the plain Maven archetype, which uh, needs some deletions or cleanup. So Jax RS, uh, I need Jax RS step, and this is the Jersey dependencies, the standards. Um, I also have a set for uh, for CXF if I'm using with um, uh, using Open Liberty or Rest Easy with uh, Whitefly. But the point is, you could do whatever you like. You will see in a second why I need it. So and uh, packaging jar, and what I don't need is the URL. And the name is obsolete. For instance, the name, if you think about this, um, this is absolute um, superfluous because um, the name is already the name of the war. So the only thing which matters is um, artifact ID. And if I would you choose a um, different name, it will cause confusion because I would see in IDE the name would be different than the folder and why to do this. So rely on convention of a configuration. So what I will also need, I think is not defined here, uh, is JUnit. And I still use the old JUnit, and the question, and the question why is because it's good enough, and I don't have to specify plugins, so it's easier for me. So I will just use that. So I don't have to specify the scope test because the whole thing is a test. Now um, I'm in the JUnit project, and uh, the name of the app test should be actually um, wait a second. So this should be. Coffee's resource IT for integration tests. And this is another convention from Maven. It says um, all integration tests ends with IT and they are executed in different life cycle. So what I can easily do right now, I can say Maven phase safe integration test and it's going to be executed without any additional configuration. No plugin configuration. So in my Java E or Jakarta E and MicroProfile projects, there are absolutely no plugins. Uh, we don't need any plugins. So um, now we have this. Now, what you can do first, uh, init client, and uh, the client is in the method before, and client builder new client, and the new client creates a client. And what I'm doing right now, it is the JaxRS client API. Um, and uh, why I need so, so many dependencies here. And the reason for that is I'm outside a server and therefore I need the API and the implementation, so-called SPI. On server, I don't need these dependencies. So I have this and then this client target 
and what the target was was that where was this coffees i still know it but it's easier to copy this <laughs> so we have that and the coffees is my target under test um so we have this and now we can actually fetch coffee or i just call it crot at the beginning uh, because because um yeah it will the name will, be, will change anyway so request and uh I would do it the right way and the right way is I first expect a response and the response uh, I, I need the status this is the status um, and what I would like to see is assert that status is 200 and now response read entity json object and this is json p um it's it is in both in json object uh, this json p specification comes with java e or jakarta 8 and microprofile as well and this is coffee and i would just do this just to see whether it work so um oh uh, I forgot to specify the um, Java source, which uh, oh, actually here. Uh, let's go with one eight, one five. So do it again, and now it uses JDK one eight. So um, it worked. So my system test was able to invoke my coffee. So now the question is, um, so first, um, again, no plugins, nothing. And because there are no plugins and the names are somehow usable, so what I, what I usually will, will do is, or not, even now, I can switch to ST. And here I can say Maven failsafe integration test. And I know all my integration tests are executed, so the Jaggy was fetched. And with Maven clean install, they are not executed because it's different lifecycle. So without any configuration, I can fully rely on it. And in projects, I can even point to um, Maven fail safe integration test. Hopefully, I will find this website quickly. But this is like explanation, the conventions. Yeah. There were somewhere. explained where the conventions are you will you will find that so this is like it has to end with it and or can start with it and then the test is going to be executed and this face safe integration test comes with uh, maven it convention let's see whether we find that comes with that so maven is absolutely convention of a configuration is there somewhere it no um so but you get the point um, rely on conventions and then um, there's no unexpected behavior but because you should know how Maven works so this is the idea and you don't have to document that so we have that now the question is why I, I showed you the uh, strange test now the system test first um, in real life this comes with a version or is versioned properly and this as well so if there are two modules and are not executed in one module, I can very easy uh, test the backward compatibility because I can re-execute the older test against the newer specification and see whether it actually works. If, the, if both were in one module, this would be not possible or hard. I, I would have to check out the module twice and to, to achieve the same, which is somehow um, strange or not cl clear. And um, also um, this module here, is absolutely independent from this module, so this is the actual test. If I would execute the tests here, what may happen is that someone will prob probably reuse entities to get them serialized and deserialized, which is uh, which won't happen in the microservice or cloud world. So, but let's see, we have a coffee shop. 
and the coffee shop. Uh, it's called Stardukes, of course. So there's no Starbucks in Brazil, it's just Stardukes. And the Stardukes so, would like to access the, brew, uh, the roastery to get some fresh coffee. So, and now the fun starts because I would just like to reload that. I would like to make the microservices communicate and um, how to do this would be the best would be the following. I have just a ping resource is good enough. Just rename the, let's just make it properly. So um, ping is going to be shop, coffee shop. And uh, this was going to be a coffee shop resource. And this would be uh, drinks. And it should be coffees, but I will confuse both. So drinks is good enough. And let's say here, coffees. And this is going to be... Um, this drink is okay. And now I get a coffee request class coffee requests, which is supposed to communicate with the other service. So now, I already implemented this class, so this was even test-driven de um, development because I have this. So if I copy this and put it here, I'm almost done, except before. There's no before on the server, but we have post-construct. And there is no test on the server, but what I can do, JSON object, I can just say uh, return this. And assert does not make any sense here. And we are ready to go. Now, the coffee shop injects uh, the uh, coffee request. <laughs> In German, it would be coffee, like luggage request. So um, this was a, a funny one. So a typo and request and this can be returned. This request dot uh, crud. You know, the name is strange. It's like fetch coffee. Now, and this is fetch coffee, right? And fetch coffee plus uh, fetched from shop. So that we. Uh, this will serialize the JSON to, uh, or just will convert the JSON to string, and we see additional string just that you will see it comes over this um, via the service. So um, looks good. Now if I will also mark it as stateless, the funniest. Oh, the good story is what happens behind the scenes now is there will be one instance of this, because convention of a configuration from the server now, this um, coffee request or coffee request. <laughs> Uh, is going to be initi initiated once, and now this instance and this instance are like tied together. So there's there's one to one relation. We get exactly one uh, coffee shop and exactly one coffee request, uh, which saves some time. If this were request scoped, this would be reinitialized every time. Okay, so now Stardukes can be de deployed again with what sh. And now we are living a little bit the microservice territory uh, territory because uh, I'm deploying two wars to one server, which is no more true in practice. In practice, we always have one-to-one -one relation, one server and one war. But um, let's see whether it actually works. So what I can do again. Now curl HTTP, localhost, and this was 8080 with uh, star dukes and resources drinks and drinks and it worked so we implemented in test driven way service to service communication with without any external dependencies and um, what's nice there are 5k why it's nice first um, what my so lots of companies companies starting to do in my project is this um, scanning for uh, problematic dependencies. And the cool story in my projects, I don't have any, <laughs> so there is nothing to scan. So my projects always pass, you know, the test because we don't have any external dependencies, for instance. And um, 
what's also nice is it is really quick. So if you are working with uh, private uh, Docker registries, which is always the case in, in the clouds, for instance, um, the deployment is really fast because the uh, wars are tiny. So, okay, but with that, I can show you something uh, interesting. So as you can see, I just have the status here, response, so I can show you something new. And this is um, at inject uh, metric registry registry and this is um, registry type and the type is going to be application so I would like to have the application registry which is for business this is there are metrics and this is now micro profile specification so and now I could like to say here registry dot counter and in this particular stage, I will look up the Open Metrics Cloud Native Foundation or Prometheus. Um, oh, that's what I will do. Prometheus conventions, because I cannot remember them. Metric and label naming uh, conventions. And this is explain what what's the format or what is the best practice to name, you know, the uh, the metrics. But um, so I always have to look it up. But we have no time for that. So I will just try to do something sensible, like um, let's say. Coffee, coffee, communication. And now, what I can do, I can, I will just concatenate the status. And ink. So, I have this. Now, I would like to restart my, uh, or restart, recall the, uh, the uh, Stadux again. And, uh, yeah, just, we can do this here matrix application as you can see you see application coffee communication 200 total one so uh, drinks two so what we built we built a uh, a um, an interesting matrix what it said is what it what it does is it, it does the following it says um, we have 200 HTTP status was executed twice so now if I will, let's try something. So I could try to delete the war. Actually, I could manage to do this. <laughs> Glassfish, domains, domain one, auto deploy. And the first one was called coffee's war. So now it should be gone. So uh, let's try to invoke the, uh, the uh, Stadux again. And we see we get a strange error. And now with metric application, we see we have two, tw we have twice 200 and once 404. And uh, what we could already do with Prometheus, and uh, we could uh, track that and uh, create some, some alerts. We say, okay, we could try you know, to invoke the service which is actually not available. So on that note, we are already here. So what we learned, uh, how to create a simply a simple business metric and, and how to use it um, in production. So uh, needless to say, most projects I see in, in real life, they, they, they don't care about metrics at all, uh, which is a pity because no one knows what actually happens behind the scenes. And the more you distribute it, the more insight or metrics you will need. Okay. But um, let's see whether there are questions. Yeah. If you, if you would like to have questions, just ask me a question. So there is... Uh, Nothing happens in chat, which is a very good thing because, um, yeah, perfect. So now, what would I also, as a convention, I think this is covered. Time to Hello World is unbeatable, I would say. With application server, you can start, you know, uh, you can reinstall the application server in 10 seconds. And... Um, and uh, start a project as, as I did. It's just the archetype is, is already there. So automation, small uh, scripts, and um, consequent design is very important. So now we have microservices because we decided to use them. So we have Coffee and Stardukes. So now both microservices have to communicate with each other, of course. So now the first question will be in the project, can we share some jars? So this is, from, 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 my, from my perspective, is... Uh, you know, you get the worst of both worlds. So you started with distribution and uh, you have a reason for that. And uh, so now you try, you know, to, to, to tie them together with uh, a shared jar 
So um, I would say a way better would be, you know, to merge them together and don't, you know, don't deploy multiple microservices if you don't have a need for that. So a monolith is always better uh, than a set of microservices without a reason. Uh, recently, I reviewed, uh, I think, were 30 microservices created by a small team. And for me, there was no obvious reason why, why they have so many microservices. Okay, so now we have that. But what we could do right now, as you can see, this fetch coffee is not very stable. So what I could do, I could say, uh, but could you please retry a little bit and do the uh, max retries, uh, let's say, two times because three is default. So let's do that. And then here. So I will try it. It was a little bit longer. And we have more metrics now. As you can see, uh, 404 was invoked three times. So if you do it uh, again. So let's do the drinks first. And then the application. So six times. So it's nine times because of the retries. But what you can also see, there were additional uh, metrics I added they, they came not from me, they came from the fault tolerance specification. And the uh, fault tolerance specification, what, what it did is it uh, added, you know, calls, fails, retro, um, uh, total um, failed uh, invocations um, were three. And I got additional, I got additional uh, information what happens or what calls. Additional information about the retries right now. So... But what I could also do, I can say, okay, in case this does not work, I would like to have a fallback. And the fallback is uh, method is like, you know, T. And this is a really terrible fall fallback, but what we can do. The problem is I have absolutely no idea about T's, but let's try this. JSON, create object builder, and add T. What I know, there is a green T. So good enough, build. So um, what happens now is, I just will add some system on print line. So. Let's see what happens. So now the uh, drinks, we see T green, and the application has some more metrics, uh, metrics because you see fallbacks was called once, total three times uh, exactly, and there were no 200. Why not 200? Because it was not redeployed yet. So we can solve the problem by, and by the way, you see here the points, so this was retried three times. So if we just change to coffees again, or uh, where is the what for the coffees? Here is coffee. Just enter, put enter, and nice. By the way, how many builds we had? Ten builds already. So we had ten deployments during the session of the one service. So now do it again, um, and now the application we see. Communication two hundred total one, so the three remains. But this was this was uh, successful. So um, what this means, uh, we can just use uh, fault tolerance in metrics together, and you could actually override everything if you like with the uh, microprofile config, which can be overridden uh, with uh, Docker or Kubernetes um, environment entries or deployment configs. Okay, so what we saw is um, that we actually were able to reuse one-to-one -one system tests, copy the test to another microservice, so we got a stop, both are uh, uh, decoupled. We called, um, uh, we just used the status, created on-the-fly counters, depending on status, and um, they should be visible immediately. So let's see. Set up uh, Prometheus, and what it should do, just create a YAML file, uh, because 
from my perspective, YAML are not that easy to write. Um, yeah. So let's. Oh, this is already problematic. Yeah. So you have to be very cautious with the YAML. It's easy to read, not that easy to write. Wait a second. So five seconds, and this is okay. So it goes. So what this means is. This is configuration for Prometheus, which will poll every five seconds uh, a job name, uh, coffee, no, uh, Sue Java, of course. Then matrix application and localhost 8080. So we have that. And with this, I can just say Prometheus and just launch it with the configuration. And 9090 should, dip, should be a port 9090. So let's go here, localhost. 1990. Perfect. It was the first time I didn't forget the port. Usually, hard time with the port. So and uh, the the metrics are already available. Um, remember, I what what I did is I just pointed to the just to the business metrics. But I could say, okay, uh, what's interests me, for instance, is 200 total. Execute and um, and one hour. So this is good. And if I will just Um, curl. What was it? Stardux. Wait a second. Stardux. It's actually a good good name. Hmm. Forgot my own. And uh, I think the curl happened here. Yeah. This is what I'm searching for. Actually, fast typing will also help. So we have this again. And if I reload that, you will see it actually is actually working. So um, so now you see probably what's, what it means. So if you, Jakarta is, is more like the basic operating system. And micro profile, if you take a look on micro profile, or I'm a micro profile, let's take a look on open metrics. So open metrics is, um, Emerging cloud native start standard, um, and from Cloud Native Foundation, and it starts to standardize the text representation from Prometheus, and uh, Micro Profile supports that. Now, if you search for instance for uh, Open API, so it's also known as Swagger. It is also kind of a standard. And um, I don't know whether this is a Cloud Native Foundation, but um, it was renamed to Open API. And uh, Swagger, is it CNCF? Might be. So we have to you know, double check that. But this is a, this emerges to to one standard, and also liveness and readiness probes, which are coming with micro profile. Is also a quasi standard because they are they come with Kubernetes. So uh, what it means is for me, micro profile all what what micro profile implements is actually has nothing to do with Java. It has to do something to do with cloud standards, which are directly implemented by uh, micro profile. And Jakarta is more like uh, um, um, abstraction from vendors. So there are different vendors, like for instance, JMS, um, JDBC is not exactly Jakarta, -y, but Java and um, and uh, we have uh, a REST like uh, or uh, um, REST service, and uh, th this is like the basic operating system. And MicroProfile is the implementation of, of native standards, and this is why they they fit both really well together. Okay, so we have both. Let's double check whether there are some questions. There are no questions, which is uh, very good or 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 really bad. So probably the stream is already broken, but it looks good in my. In my um, so we have a few minutes left. So we have focus on task. Um, um, what it means is, um, what's really important for me is um, to find out the vision of the application or the task. What we would like to solve, actually to solve. So in, in my particular case, the Stardux or coffee, we would like you know, to expose what? Management of coffees. Is it a coffee roastery? And, and what it actually does. And if you know it, 
from 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 then you should just use um, apply clarity and what clarity means is for instance clear naming what I would expect in such a project that the top level uh, packages here are all named after after domain concepts so I would allow I would allow to have packages here like um, uh, inside uh, coffee like you know uh, what we have let's say uh, roaster or coffee machine or mugs or uh, even t-shirts for sale or, or, or t-shirts for sale that would be like products but um, what I uh, what I think is not necessary to name packages after you know uh, technical stuff like for instance mappings mappers transformers factories uh, foundation domain uh, what, whatever uh, pointless names why that because what i think what will happen is um, after a few iterations um, uh, the project will be more mature you will switch the projects or do something else in another project then come back and if you see you know proper names uh, then you can you, you, you will for instance you get, you get a user story or use case about coffee and you will find a coffee here I will open the coffee you will find whatever is coffee related but I don't think you get a no uh, um, user story just change exception or uh, add uh, additional mapping so this is more this is not that likely it's all, all about likelihood so and the most important thing is keep it simple and stupid and you aren't gonna need it so both also you will find on Wikipedia, um, why it is important. So we actually did this, right? So we started the project without super pumps. Uh, why that? We only have two dependencies. If you have two dependencies, it is pointless to extract, you know, diversions to somewhere else because this will change, you know, uh, once a year and this will change prop in, in, in real world project probably just also once a year because you probably want, you know, um, update uh, all your microservices all the time, but you could, but yeah, in worst case, this will change four times a year. Um, and if this changes four times a year, I don't need to extract that in a super pump. So um, also, um, I can still define here plugins and whatever I like, but these plugins and all the stuff uh, can be also done later. So it's not necessary in a project to do it right, right now. So we have that. And um, so this is um, keep it simple and stupid. Also, let's say exception handling, for instance. What we can do, where is my coffee? So here's my coffee. And let's let's just show you this here. So let's assume I will have exception throw new illegal state exception. And let's call that, or not that, Too late for a pink exception. And this is by. So, so I have the exception, which is, let's say, runtime exception. And the runtime exception does that. message so now if I start this and completely wrong it should be coffees resources pink So can it be compiled? Pink was good and coffee, not coffees. Okay. So uh, try it again. It was coffee, not coffees. Resources pink. And now I got a uh, 500 internal server error with uh, with the message, which is okay. But what let's say um, too late for a pink? Is this actually a business error? So what I would expect, not 500, rather than 400 bad requests, you know, you are too late for this request. So, and what uh, I see a lot in projects, they try, you know, to extract it, and we are in the lucky situation, the exception happens here, 
But if the exception would be hidden be, um, behind dependency exception and uh, dependency dependency exception dependency injection, uh, developers would try to extract the exception or create exception mappers. So it they, 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 they try to extract the exception in too late. So what 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 I will do here, for instance. Instead of inheriting from runtime exception, I could inherit from web application exception. And now I can say, okay, now I'm in the web mode. So I can say response uh, uh, status, let's call, let's say 400 and header this uh, info session is going to be to long build okay looks good so if i retry that we see bad request um info session is going to be too long so um this for me is more explicit because i see okay ex um, um this is the web application exception it maps itself into HTTP status code, so I don't need an external enum to map that. And this is simple enough, and then it can very easily extend it or catch it if I really like. Um, so this was uh, exception handling. On that note, what's also not allowed in my project, if I have the power you know, to prohibit that, are all kinds of interfaces or factories. Because um, actually in microservice world, no one cares what you're doing inside the application um, as long as the REST API is, is, is clean. And uh, in this particular case, for instance, my exception is not well designed because it de depends on JAXRS. But uh, my whole microservice depends on JAXRS. It's not like I can say, okay, uh, later I will switch back to Corba. This is uh, extremely unlikely. So um, I can, uh, for instance, this dependency is not is not nice, but is good enough. Okay, I think there is a question. No, false alarm. Okay, so it means everything was is crystal clear what happens here. So we covered um, communication between microservice, a couple of uh, microprofile um, APIs, and uh, and system tests, and um, it was hello world. But I think on that, so this is how my more complicated project looked like, and uh, but this projects. Um, um, they are complicated because of the business logic and not because of technology. So we have far more uh, packages here, and all the packages are structured the same way. Boundary is the is the API to the outside world. Uh, entity is the data. It is, can be transient or persistent with JPA or no JNoSQL, of course. And um, and the uh, boundary usually comprises a RESTful service to the outside world or WebSocket, for instance. And this REST service points to a uh, to a class which is more or less a facet, and this facet and this facet comes um, with pure business logic without any pollution with JAXRS uh, annotations. So the idea is the coffee resource and roaster are actually one unit, and they are only split to make in, to make them easier to test to unit test. And what you can also do, you can for instance apply let's say timed annotation on 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 business on on key business um, methods, and if I perform, what was it? Uh, this was the coffee roaster. Coffee and the this was coffees. Yes. So this was invoked, and now let's try the matrix. We should find here another performance metric, and we see that the roast roast method was was invoked once with some uh, performance metrics, which can be accessed from uh, from Prometheus. And uh, Prometheus is the data source, and Grafana you would usually choose uh, to use to have prettier diagrams. So I think I covered a lot. So if you're interesting, we can meet us again with the same infrastructure on Airhex TV. But if I invoke that, it will end in endless loop because here comes the streaming and the internet will probably end, I guess. Let's see what happens. So this should be the, 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 the current stream. Still black. 
oh, I see myself uh, in uh, 10 minutes ago, if I will click this. So it works. So we, 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 we can uh, um, meet us here. If you're interested, Airhex FM is the podcast. Before you listen to something, the only allowed episode for now is with Bruno Souza, the Java man. And if you like, there's Scott McNeely and James Gosling as well. So we have this, and um, I think I never had attendees from Brazil. I had attendees from all over the world. So if you like, attend the workshops. This winter, uh, they are in Munich, so way too far from Brazil. But uh, I think this time I still get attendees from um, uh, from whole Europe. And uh, there was one chief architect that will be from even uh, Nigeria. So um, I need it from all over the world. So thank you for watching. Um, and uh, thank you a lot for the invitation. And enjoy, um, you know, enjoy, uh, how to call it, lean um, micro profile and Jakarta E. So thank you and bye.